praise wherever you are. Amen, amen, amen. Is there any desire on YouTube, on Facebook, in the church tonight for Jesus to rest upon your heart? There's a song that said, into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, rest and abide, Lord Jesus. We welcome you tonight to our Keep Hope Alive gospel series, and we're grateful that you've joined us, whether virtually or in person, to worship together in spirit and in truth. I'm looking at the chat and I see Onisha Hall saying, Rain Jesus in the chat on YouTube. And we want to give a shout out to you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. All of you joining us in the house, in the sanctuary at 270 Reynolds Terrace. We believe that God is worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise. And so we want to officially welcome you to our first live event for Keep Hope Alive. Some of you might be on your way, watching on your phone. Some of you are here in the church, and we want to acknowledge you and thank you for joining us for this experience. Each and every night, the word has gone forth with power and clarity, and the goal has been to revive your hope, because we all know we are living in challenging times, and we praise God for the blessed hope that we have in Jesus Christ. If you're joining us from another state other than New Jersey, would you please do us a favor and type in the chat where you are joining us from on Facebook or on YouTube. We want to shout you out and let you know that we appreciate you. We have a happy Sabbath from Virginia. We have a Virginia cohort of Koto family, y'all. Shout out to Onisha for joining us on Facebook. I'm going to look on Facebook to see who we have joining us on Facebook. We have Irma Pearson saying happy Sabbath. We have Lorene Burke saying happy Sabbath. Perlethea Mira saying happy Sabbath. We are so grateful that you've joined us to worship together in spirit and in truth. Crystal is joining us from Florida. Thank you for joining us, Sister Crystal. We are glad you are here. Sister Princess, one of the faithfuls every night has been here. Thank you for joining us. We have Perlethea joining us from Marion, South Carolina. We are grateful to be a family of faith connected by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we praise God for our experience this week and last week. And as we kick off into this experience tonight, let us pray together. God, we thank you so much for bringing us through another week. God, we thank you so much for the breath that is in our lungs, for the mobility that is in our limbs. God, we thank you so much for the Sabbath. God, thank you for this opportunity to, to exhale and to connect with you and to celebrate this weekly holiday. God, we are grateful that you are God above all things. God, there is nothing in this world that has dominion over you. God, there is no problem that is bigger than you. There is no person that is bigger than you. There is no situation that is bigger than our God. And so, God, we thank you for being who you are. And, God, we acknowledge that there are those listening tonight from near and far who are hopeless, who need some hope tonight. And, God, we are praying that the word tonight would inject their hearts with hope. We're praying that the fellowship that they experience virtually or in the house would enrich their soul and remind them that there is hope in Jesus Christ. God, we thank you so much for what we'll experience, for what we'll hear. And we'll be careful, as always, to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. At this time, as you're typing in the chat where you are joining us from, we have Tanache, pastor, joining us from D.C. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Sister Cynthia saying happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us. Hadassah, we're grateful for your fellowship on tonight. And as, as we worship, I feel like we need to sing a song to, to, to usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit, acknowledging that he's here because we believe that God is good and God is worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise. Anybody want to say thank you, Lord? for all you've done for me. And that's all we're going to say. Say thank you, Lord. It's real simple. Thank you, Lord. Is that your, is that your praise tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just 
want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Let's modulate one time. Because you've been so good. Lord, you've been good. good to anybody tonight? Thank him for keeping you, for protecting you, keeping your mind, for preserving you from the hand of the enemy. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Happy Sabbath, everybody. To those watching near and far, we bless God for you that you've taken the time to join us. To my grandbabies down in Virginia, love you guys. To all the folks in Maryland, all the folks all over the nation, all over the world who've taken the time to join us today. We do have a word from the Lord. There's a preacher in the house today, and we're excited. By the way, we just want to remind you that tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to be right here, and the preacher is going to be right here tomorrow. Also, one additional thing I want you to know, Pine Forge Choir, Pine Forge Academy Choir, will be, they have done a very special project, and because we partnered with them on the project, we're going to have a live viewing of the project here in-house tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock. Now, I just want to be clear. 
it's, it cannot be broadcast on the internet all over the world, but it will be here at Koto Amen. tomorrow, 5 p.m. with our students, our kids. We've partnered with them for this project. We're glad we're able to support PFA. And so tomorrow is a big day. We have baptism tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be preaching the first service in the morning uh, at, at uh, 6 o'clock. Then we have Sabbath school. I'm going to be doing Sabbath school tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Then we have the preacher in the house for noon. It's a full day. We're going, to, we're going to have baptism tomorrow. Oh, yes, souls are going down in the watery grave of baptism. The pool is ready. The water is already warm. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Ah, the Lord has already troubled the water. And so I'm excited that tomorrow we have baptism. Then we have dinner here tomorrow. We have lunch uh, or dinner, whichever one you want to call it. Yeah, it's, it's after church. The same one after church, that one. Whatever you put on, whatever tag you put on it is what it's going to be. So uh, right after church tomorrow, we're going to be eating. We're going to be fellowshipping with all the people who got baptized in 2021. With many precious souls who have joined this church this year. We want to celebrate them. We're going to be eating. We're going to get... Uh, a get to know you moment hear a little about them give them a little bit more understanding about the church and then right after that right around five o'clock we'll have our pine forge concert and production in-house somebody say in-house in somebody type in the chat somebody type in the chat just so everybody knows it's in-house it's not on the internet it's gonna be in the building in the building so get here no matter what else you got to do, get here tomorrow evening and let's have a great time together. Pastor Jovan White is here with us tonight again. We bless God for his ministry. We bless God for the word that the Lord has put in his heart. Tonight is going to be no exception to the other nights. Uh, he's going to bring a word. He's fired up. He's ready to go. He brought his wife as reinforcement. She'll be in the house tomorrow. This anointed woman of God, they are a dynamic duo. And so we're excited to have them. Don't forget, by the way, don't forget, uh, if you want to support the church financially, don't forget, uh, go on our church website. We got a, a zillion different ways for you to give. You can give on Cash App. You can give on Zelle. You can give on, uh, when you come tomorrow, you can give by credit debit card. Uh, you can mail it to 270 Reynolds Terrace. Orange, New Jersey, 07050, 270 Reynolds Terrace, Church of the Oranges, uh, 270 Reynolds Terrace, Orange, New Jersey, 07050. Or you can download the Adventist Giving app. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. And now, Praise Team is going to break us off another powerful selection. They're going to take us on in. We're going to experience the anointing one more time. And then, the man of God with the word of God. Bless the Lord, everybody. My God is awesome. He can move the mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Wherever you are right now, we want you to sing this. Open your mouth. Let your neighbors hear you. Amen. It's all right. Savior 
Come on and bless him in this place. Come on and bless him wherever you are. Wherever you are, wherever you are. We want to usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Simply singing a song that we all know from our homes, our hymns. Love our hymns, amen. Praise God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Come on and help me. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase, purchase of God, born of a spirit, born of his spirit. Say this is 
the Lord somebody this is a day that the Lord hath made we shall rejoice and be glad in it come on put your hands together wherever you are we'll give God the highest place he's worthy to be praised not because of what he's done but because of who he is and if you're not too bougie if you're not too proud as usual I'm doing a roll call in that YouTube chat room just just put a put a hallelujah in the house type 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 hashtag hallelujah if you're happy that you're six feet above your grave just put a hashtag in the YouTube chat and type a hallelujah you can let me know where you are tuning in from we've been having a wonderful time as we've been sharing through the word of God I didn't even realize the praise team was up I was waiting for some more music so, so when he came off I was still still being blessed by the praise team God bless you guys put your hands together for the praise team we give God thanks and give God thanks for the might and ministry of the praise team and all the leaders and officers of this great church it is good to be in the house of the Lord amen want to say a big happy Sabbath to Pastor Arnold he was our preacher last week he's in the house in the YouTube chat and my good friend from Jamaica Pastor Lindsay is a youth director there and I have some friends from Brazil where I used to minister in music there they're tuning in all the persons across the world my friends in Orlando Florida my church family they're listening and we give God thanks for what he's doing in this season tomorrow not tomorrow not tomorrow night tomorrow we'll be having a wonderful baptism souls are signing up for the christian jubilee and if you are saying tonight i want to be in that number i want to give my life to jesus come on up tomorrow with your clothes and even if you don't bring your clothes god will move upon your heart and will get you ready we have things here for you to get you ready for Jesus to come. I want to give God thanks for the mighty ministry of my good friend, my big brother, a colleague in the ministry or mentor for us as young pastors, Pastor Dr. Studdard, Lady Studdard, good to see you, and Pastor Peer or associate pastor here at the, at the Church of the Oranges. My wife is in the house, my cute, delicious, and be delicious wife. I'm happy she's here to keep the preacher warm in this climate. Amen. 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 My lonely days are over. All right. Let's get right to work. Mark chapter 8. We're looking at the caption tonight from bad sight to better insight. Give God thanks for the musicians. Put your hands together for them. We give God thanks. Good to see you again, my friend, on the organ. From bad sight to better insight. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the caption, it's time to leave Lodibar. Mark chapter 8, the Bible says, verse 22, very familiar passage of scripture. Let's see what God has in store for us. We'll be on the screen also to see what we can learn deeper in prophetic ministry. Mark chapter 8, I'm going to ask Brother Morris, just could he, could he collect my clicker for my wife as she, yes. Mark chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says, Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to, to him and begged him to touch him. Verse 23 says, he took the blind man by the hand, and the Bible says, and led him out of the town. And when he had spat on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. Bible says in verse 24, and he looked up and said, I see men like walking like trees. Verse 25, then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. 
and he was restored and he saw everything and everyone clearly. You bow your heads with me as we bless this word. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Take now lips of clay, let them move by the impulse of your love. So Lord, as I kneel in front of your people, I'm not worthy, I've messed up so many times, but stand in my body, Holy Ghost. Use me now in a meaningful manner. May you send angels who excel in strength to take up their places. Heal some broken heart, we pray. Set some captives free. May we leave here inspired. May we leave here with greater insights in your words, we pray. Break up the traps of the enemy. May somebody say yes to the living God tonight. Let the words of our mouth, meditation of our hearts, be found acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Let everyone say amen, amen. From bad sight to better insight. From bad sight to better insight. Just a little bit on the monitors here, please. From bad sight to better insight. My brothers and sisters, vision is one of the most powerful things we as human beings possess. And if you don't believe me, ask Helen Keller, who was the first blind and deaf person to write a book and to start the, the sign language movement. Helen Keller was asked the question, what would be worse than being born blind? Helen Keller says, having eyes but no vision. Vision stretches us beyond all reality. Vision stretches us beyond all pain. Vision causes us to reach from far from, from what is in the residing in the potential realm that isn't always in the reality realm. And oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, when we experience difficult circumstances within our lives, it is critical, here it is, that we are able to see what God is doing, see what God will do, and see what God can do through us if we have the courage, the faith, and the vision to trust him. And even now in this COVID-19 crisis, it may be difficult to see your way out through this time of uncertainty and confusion and ambiguity. But though we live in a time of uncertainty, we can still trust God's sovereignty. Come on up in here. God is still in control. And here in this book of Mark, we see evidences of Jesus' miraculous power on display as he heals the sick and and heals the sick of every disease, of every kind of disease. A God who's touched with the feelings of all infirmities. He sees all sorrows and he feels all pain. He understands the tears that you cry. But more importantly, here it is, Mark's gospel, this is so sweet, not only has evidence of Jesus' miraculous power, but it also has pulse and pace. Don't miss this. Because when you read Mark's gospel, everything is happening immediately. Or if you don't believe me, the Bible says in Mark chapter 1 and verse 31, the first chapter of the book of Mark, Simon mother's in law, mother-in-law was sick with fever. And the Bible says Jesus shows up on the house and he touched her and her fever left her body. Here is the word immediately in Mark chapter 2 and verse 12. The man was sick with palsy. He's crippled. He could not walk. But his friends had the crazy faith to break open a roof and let him down at the feet of Jesus and Jesus touched that man and he was healed here it is immediately come on up in here I'm helping you you're still not there Mark chapter 5 and verse 21 a woman she had the issue of blood she she was she was draining with blood for so many years but she touched the hem of Jesus's garment and Jesus stopped the fountain of blood and she was healed immediately here it is in Mark chapter 7 and verse 26 the deaf man encounters Jesus and the Bible says he was made whole immediately but here in Mark chapter 8 my organ brother here it is my, my musician the miracle here did not happen immediately in fact, this miracle of sight restoration 
is the first of all miracles that Jesus heals in steps and stages. Mm. And my brothers and sisters, in fact, we need to take a scholarly look at this because, because of all the miracles, it is the reared of miracles, but it's, it's, it's the most realistic. Because truth be told, God has moved in steps and stages in our lives. But not all our breakthroughs have come through immediately. I wonder if anybody here who can testify on YouTube, on Facebook. I don't always have an immediate testimony. I don't always have an immediate miracle. I don't always pray and God gives me immediately what I pray for. Because sometimes, don't miss this, God delays from answering not to deny you, but to take you through a faith process. I'm going to get excited all by myself because not everything we pray for, God does immediately. Sometime he wants us to wait so he can take through a faith process. But if you miss the process, you may lose sight of the miracle that is coming. And that's why from, from, from last year 2020 to 2021, my hashtag has been hashtag trust the process God is saying to somebody keep on praying but while God takes you through that process you gotta trust him because your breakthrough is coming hashtag trust the process come on put it in the YouTube chat hashtag trust the process you've been waiting for a job waiting for a financial breakthrough but God is saying trust the process praying for a husband waiting for a wife just wait the miracle is coming just trust the process praying for COVID-19 to leave your body but God is saying just trust the process you don't got no money you don't got no job your credit card is maxed out but God is saying just trust the process because the good book says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as he goes they shall run they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint and I'm not giving you a prosperity message pray and get it claim it and uh, 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 uh. sometimes God ain't allow you to claim it unless you pray on it some more you gotta wait on God oh will is not his way or oh, plans are not his pro purpose we gotta trust the process here it is and that's why in this story mark identifies us i'm going to go deep in prophecy tonight i'm going to help you to see what god wants you to understand in your life mark identifies a blind man and as usual throughout the gospel of mark mark does something interesting he identifies the person by their circumstance and not by their name don't miss this the blind man though he's nameless he's still necessary there is no real name for the blind man sister stuttered nor is there any mention of his family background mark tells us simply that this nameless blind man just meets jesus in bethsaida along the way <laughs> and verse 22 of mark chapter 8 i'm in my text i won't be long hang with the preacher the bible says they brought a blind man to him begged jesus to touch him if you with the preacher say amen can i open up this the man had no sight but his friends had the vision to know that in the physical realm he can't see but if they connect him to jesus in the spiritual realm he may get sight jesus had the power to proclaim sight my first point is don't miss this you need to have in this season faithful friends not fake friends but you need to have faithful friends who will connect you to godly vision instead of leaving you to fail in a blind position. 
let me repeat that so you can tweet that in this season God is saying you need to have faithful friends who will direct you to godly vision instead of leaving you to fail in a blind position in these last days Kodo church of the origins I can't hang around fake faithless friends and bad mind church people you got to have people who have godly vision who can direct you in the presence of God you got to have friends who are wrapped up tied up tangled up with Jesus friends who will see you failing in a blind position but they will wake you up to see Jesus I don't need friends who hang around to gossip and tear my name down I don't need friends instead of building me up spiritually they pull me down with bad mind and envy that's why the song says I need the pearls of those I love while traveling through life's rugged way that I may true and faithful be and live for Jesus every day I want my friends to pray for me to bear my tempted soul above and to in to see uh, with God for me uh, I need some friends uh, who know about praying uh, and less train uh, more fasting uh, and less feasting uh, less gossiping uh, and more worshiping uh, less menacing uh, and more praising uh, because when the praises go up uh, hallelujah the blessings will come down today the best friend to have is Jesus somebody say amen the Bible says, here it is, some persons who we claim are his friends brought the blind man to Jesus. However, notice if you will, when they brought the blind man to Jesus, Jesus does something interesting. He takes the man away from the crowd, away from his friends. Here comes Pastor Hill, the tension of the text. Why did Jesus have to take the man outside of the town? Couldn't he heal the man right in front of them? My second point, I won't be long, here it is. Sometimes Jesus has to take you away from a place of blindness to put you in a place of purpose Jesus has to take you away from a place of blindness to put you in a place of purpose in the book preachers commentary Pre preachers complete commentary the perspective shared was in a real sense Jesus took the man outside of the town because oftentimes when we stay in the town we are blind the town is symbolic of the world the distractions that take us away from God and even this season the latest statistics from the University of Cambridge says that many young people are distracted more in church than ever before on social media distracted even in the church hanging with hanging with them uh, uh, lady Megan the stallion I don't remember her name hanging with the wrong people on Facebook and on, on, on Instagram, hanging to the music of Justin Bieber and all kinds of people who are not following the, the will of the Almighty God, hanging with the wrong people, WhatsApping the wrong crowd. Yeah, we are distracted in this season, but in this season we can see the real Christians who know what it means to talk with God. Here it is because oftentimes we are spiritually blind when we stay in the town a place of distraction uh, and worldly worldly distraction uh, which the devil uses to entangle us so we can see Jesus in this COVID-19 crisis uh, I can truly say it has caused me to look deeper in my spiritual life allowing for self-reflection and closer connection and I can't say I have everything together. Sometime I may fall. But this situation has helped us to understand that we need Jesus now more than ever. This crisis has caused me, caused us to straighten up our faith and foundation with God. As we go to the screen, for soon we will be approaching the time of trouble. Ellen White says in the book Last Days that we must have our eyes fixed on Jesus and keep our focus in the prophetic messages of revelation I'm talking about focusing from bad sight to better insight on the screen my brother we ask the question is this the end are we at the verge of the time of trouble prophesied by revelation chapter 15 the seven last 
plagues. Here it is, Revelation 15 verse 1, and in white says, while we try to focus on Jesus, we should not only focus on him, but have a relationship with him so firm and f firm on firmly founded on the principles of God that when the time of trouble comes, we will not be lost. The plagues are coming. A lady said to me, Pastor, we're in the last, we're in the last days. I said, yes, yes, sister, we, we have been living in the last days for quite a while. She said, the COVID-19 is one of the seven last plagues. I said, no, sister, it's not one of the seven last plagues. It's one of the pestilences noted in Matthew chapter 24. The seven last plagues come after the mark of the beast is enforced. And we move in what we call a time of trouble. Revelation 15, here it is. Verse 1 says, then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous are thy works seven angels with seven plagues having the wrath of God to be completed here it is having seven plagues for in them is filled up with the wrath of God the time of trouble is depicted in the plagues. The seven last plagues, therefore, let's read together, are the awesome result of a world separated from God and a planet in rebellion. God, here it is, God will, will, will unleash these plagues. But for those who receive the mark of the beast, as I said on Wednesday night, will have the wrath of God poured out without without in his indignation but for those who are wrapped up in Jesus somebody say amen for those who walk the walk and talk to talk we don't got to worry about the plagues because the Bible says oh bread and water shall be sure through the time of trouble we shall hide under the shadow of his wings that's why the song says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide shall abide under the shadow of his anointing we got nothing to fear if we keep our focus on God what are the what are the things that will happen leading up to the time of the end a lot of Adventists a lot of biblical scholars a lot of theologians are a little bit confused about what continues where we are now and how does this whole movie end number one we are now doing the worldwide preaching of the gospel and now it's more worldwide because COVID-19 the devil thought it was meant for evil <laughs> but God is turning that thing around for our good because there's never been a time that we can downlink and uplink and send the word of God across the world and people can see it with a click of their fingertip footnote of advertisement if you have your hand on your device share this message so somebody can hear the word of God flood your whatsapp with something worthwhile don't flood it with selfies and mix up and blend that we'll say in the Caribbean about things about your here do and your Malaysian or your Brazilian weave and talking about your open toe close toe shoes or your leggings or your jeggings or your off black stocking I know these things I buy them all the time Talk about Jesus. Hello, somebody. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. Share this. Number one, we're doing worldwide preaching. Let me help you quickly. Number two, all humanity makes a final decision. That's what's going to happen. After the preaching of the gospel, we will have to make a final decision when the Sunday law is enforced. Number three, the mark of the beast is then enforced in a final conflict over what? Over what church? Worship. Over what? Worship. Who we worship. How we worship. When we worship. The Pentecostals and the charismatic religious faiths groups. The, the evangelical groups. Some of them have a special time, a special way of worship. They have their day of worship on Sunday. So it's how we worship. Who we worship. When we worship. I told you on Wednesday. The revelation classifies two groups of people. Those who follow God's commandments and have the seal of God which is a Sabbath. And those who follow the beast. Where is your focus is I'm talking about bad side to, to better insight God's loyal people lovingly obey him for following his
his ways. And number five, then the time of trouble, the seven last plagues is poured out. And then at the seventh plague or at the seventh seal, God shows up and he saves us will somebody say amen will somebody lift up their hands and say praise the lord we shall be on the sea of glass with fire and those who have had victory over the beast his image and his number we shall stand with our harps in our hands and we shall wave palm leaves and we shall say great and marvelous all thy works God Almighty, just and true, all your ways. I go, King of Kings. Somebody say, Amen. We got to keep our focus in the book Last Day Events. Here, what Ellen White says: Satan is working in the atmosphere. He is poisoning the atmosphere with viruses and pestilences of no cure. Aren't we in that time now? Talk to me, church. Talk to me. COVID nineteen has no cure. Ellen White is so prophetic here. And she says, while we are in this position, we should be wide awake, wholly devoted, wholly converted, and wholly consecrated to God. In these times, God wants to wake us up and remove us out of a place of distraction. Just like this blind man, we got to ensure in these last days, in this present truth context, that our lives are fixed and focused on Jesus. Because when we are in a place of blindness, we can see God. Let me talk to somebody in a place of blindness, in a relationship that is toxic, you can see God. Uh, your job has taken up your time. Uh, you can't talk to God. Uh, your COVID-19, the news reports uh, of, of M M M MBC and, uh, and CNN and BBC uh, has consumed your heart. Uh, and Dr. Fossey's news, you know, Dr. Fossey has his own news that sometimes gets us afraid and we wait about Dr. Foss's interpretation or his prophetic, his prophetic interpretation of what will happen in the future. But our hope is built on nothing less. I wish I had a church. But Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We can only build our faith on Jesus and Christ, the solid rock. Will somebody say amen? The Bible says Jesus takes the man away and does something unnatural, unusual, and unanticipated. Jesus takes the man away from the people for a process that is beyond normal. You see, Jesus takes the man by the hand, leads him out of the town, but doesn't heal him right away because Jesus, here it is, wanted the man to follow him blind before giving him sight. Jesus does this to test the man's blind man's faith because we walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 10 verse 18 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the living God. Today, many of us amidst this pandemic may be blinded by fear of the future, but we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, things don't look good, but we shall walk by faith and not by sight. Your credit card may be maxed out. You're worried about the future. You have not been vaccinated as yet. But we walk by faith and not by sight. The text tells us that the just shall live by faith because God has given us a spirit of fear but of love power and a sound mind. The text tells us as Jesus leaves a man outside of the town, Jesus spat on his eyes. Can I give you something new? This modality of healing is a bit different from all the other blind men that Jesus encounters. Don't miss this. For there are many cases where Jesus encounters blind people. In Matthew chapter 9, the blind man talks to Jesus and he receives his healing because Jesus spoke to him. In Matthew chapter 10, a blind man is there. He got his sight because he was in the presence of God. 
Blind Bartimaeus on the wayside saw Jesus and Jesus laid his hand on him and he spoke to him and he got his sight. So watch this, Pastor Hill, Pastor Sutton, we have a mode and modality, Pastor Peer, of healing by presence, healing by hand, and healing by the word. We have no precedence of healing by spit. Let me repeat that so you can tweet that. This mode and modality is different. God has always healed by his presence, healed by his word and by his hand. There is no precedent of spit. Therefore, <laughs> you can't gauge how God is going to handle your issue based on how he handles somebody else. Because God is too omni to, to, omni to copy. He's too, too omnipotent. He's too omniscient. He's too omnipresent. He's too super to be natural he's too much of a god that we can't understand his ways let me put it where you can catch it you see our plans are not his purpose or will is not his our way he, he, he may have given you a word for your situation he may have touched your life but for people like me he had to spit on me because sometimes god has to bring you bring something good out of a nasty situation if you can't say amen just out for you pastor hill he may have given a word for you dr white he may have touched you for you my organist he may have been in his present but for people who are messed up like me do i have a witness sometimes god has to spit on us because something good sometimes comes out of a nasty process and I'm so, I'm so glad uh, for some of us on YouTube and Facebook, uh, you may can testify uh, that you are nobody, uh, but God puts you in a place uh, that you are somebody. Uh, your life was a mess, uh, but God uh, turned your life into a message. Come on, let's have some church. Uh, ah, you may have been in the uttermost, uh, but God uh, placed you uh, on the uttermost. Uh, you may have been uh, a prostitute, uh, but God uh, has turned turned your life around and now you are a preacher you are a mess but God has made you in your message your life was broken but it's now mended your life was broken but he fixed you he picked you up he turned you around he plants your feet on a solid crowd he's able he's able I know he's able. I know. I said, I know my God is able to carry me through. You can testify today if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Hashtag trust the process. I'm done. They told me to preach a sermon. I'm done. Today I thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy, for his grace will always, for some of us, be greater and for all of us than sin. The Bible says, here it is, I'm done. Jesus spat on the man's eyes and asked the man, Sister Stuttered, what do you see? I'm talking about from bad sight to better insight. What do you see? The man says, I see men walking as trees. <laughs> Pastor Hill, my brothers and sisters, the mere fact that the man sees men, it means that the, that the process was working. <laughs> the phrase, I see men, would suggest this is definite. He can see. But Jesus was saying to the man, I'm touching you a second time. Not to give you sight, but to give you better insight. Not to bring you from bad sight, but to put you in better renewed focus. Come here, let me put it where you can catch it. I was in high school and you know, as a little, little younger man in high school, there's a time in high school in Jamaica that, that the cool guys were wearing glasses, like Pastor Pierre, wearing glasses. Is he wearing glasses though? Yes, he is. And everybody would pass us so you got one one too. So you'd be a cool kid back in the days. All the girls like the guys with glasses and dimples. Oh, you'd be one of them too, my organist. I got no dimples and I had no glasses. 
So I said, you know what? I'm going to act like I'm sick in my eyes because I want some glasses. The next day I woke up and said, Mom, I can't see so well. She said, you can't see. No, I can't focus. So, so she carried me to the ophthalmologist and, you know, he has to do that test. So I didn't know that that was a real test to let me know for certain I need glasses or not. So I was there and I went through the, the, the process. I, I was trusting the process because I wanted to get my breakthrough for glasses. And so he said, look, look through that thing. And I looked through and he opened it up and I saw A, B, C, D. And as I go, go small, as I go to the second row, it gets small. And I said, A, B, C, D. And, and he said, and he, uh, he said, all right, Joe, but I'm going to do something else. Let me fix this. And he began to focus that thing. And I went low and low and I saw all the letters. And I said, oh, wow, I, I finished the test. I finished this one. I said, okay, doctor, where is the real test? He said, that was the real test. You don't got no glasses. And you don't need no glasses. You have 2020 vision. I was so mad. I went down, downtown and bought my own glasses. And some of us are like me. We don't want to listen to God. God says you can see, but I'm going to touch you a second time because you need to focus. I needed to focus on God. So to touch you, the issue is not that he can see. The issue is that the man can't see. The problem is you can't see the difference between men and trees. <laughs> the, the, so I touch you a second time Jesus says because you lost your focus and the fact of the matter is this is applicable to us today because many of us should be told we have lost out our focus on Jesus COVID-19 and this vaccination issue has divided us whether you're vaccinated or not that's not the issue we need to keep our focus and get wrapped up in the word and seek to save souls for the kingdom of God. Will somebody say amen? Yes, we claim to see Jesus, but oftentimes we fail to focus daily on him. The devil has us distracted the things of this world. We spend more time talking about COVID-19 and about vaccination more than talking about Jesus. And it's good to be vaccinated. That's my view. Amen. Amen. If you can't say amen, that's all right. We spend more time dividing ourselves among this issue. We need to spend more time, less time WhatsApping and more time praying. Spend less time Instagramming and more time witnessing. Can I speak the truth and shame the devil? More time working than, than worshiping. Distracted in gambling and drinking. Distracted in a toxic relationship with your boo, your bae, or your boy. Distracted doing your own thing in your own world when you should be focusing on the living God. But today God is saying to somebody, I don't want you to, to see me, but I want you. Uh, to, to, to focus uh, on me uh, so I want Jesus uh, to just touch me uh, why uh, because Jesus uh, is uh, your way maker you got to focus on him uh, because he is uh, a promise keeper he is uh, a problem solver he is uh, a virus blocker he's my way out of no way he's Adam's redeemer he's David's he's David's Vindicator, he's Moses, push on fire, he's Solomon's song, he's David, wisdom, he's Ezekiel wheel in the middle of the wheel, he's Israel cloud by day, born of fire by night, he's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords, the old songwriter would say, he's a rose of sound, he's a bright, he's a bright and morning star. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Then angels prostrate forth, bring forth the royal diadem. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Oh, he gains, be lifted up. He everlasting doors, and the king of glory will come in. Who is, who is? 
is the King of glory, the Lord God, strong and mighty. He is mighty, mighty in all battles. I don't know about you. Jesus didn't touch the blind man a second time because the first time didn't work. <laughs> he touched him a second time for a different purpose. He touched him a second time to fix his focus. And I don't know about you. Today I want Jesus to just keep touching my life. Anybody want to say, Pastor, I want Jesus to keep touching my life. I want him to touch me, touch me till my mind gets sanctified. Touch me till my soul is purified. Touch me till my sins are nullified. Touch me till my life is rectified. Touch me till my heart is glorified. Is there anybody here who wants to say, Spirit of the living God? Fall afresh, fall afresh on me. Take a stand with the preacher in the sanctuary tonight. Take a stand with the preacher. You want to say, Lord Jesus, I long, as my friend comes to sing that song, to be perfectly whole. Want you forever to live in my soul. Break down, can take one of those mics, break down every idol. Cast out of a foe and watch me. Watch me, God. Touch me, Lord. That I may be wider than snow. Wider than snow, Lord. Wider than snow. Lord, touch me. Lord, wash me. That I may be wider than snow. Today you may be blinded by the things of this world. You're pressing on, trying to go up the upward way. You've lost your focus. But today listen to me, my friend. On YouTube, on Facebook, you're boxed up. You're shackled in depression, shackled in fear shackled in anxiety your life is broken your heart is broken you don't got no vision you can't see your way the tears are flowing but tonight god wants to touch you you want to say take my life and let it be consecrated lord to thee as my friend in the communication center he will put up that link find that link so we can talk with you we can pray for you we can study with you tomorrow night is your day tomorrow in the daytime rather in divine service it's your day it's your time to shine for years God has called you and today he's saying come tomorrow on God's Sabbath and just trust the process when the call is given walk up take your cow give your life to the living god this world is not our home we're just a passing through but as you keep praying you keep pushing pray on the song says this is what the lord is helping you to do pray on pray on time is ticking keep on praying keep on pushing pray push hashtag while you're pushing while you're praying hashtag just trust the process for soon and very soon your miracle is coming you want to say take my life and let it be consecrated lord to thee push my friend pray until something happens the time of trouble is coming. The four angels are holding back the winds of strife. But soon probation door will close. And the son of the law will be enforced. And at that time there will be no room for repentance. Tonight is your night. Sign up. Go on that link. Click that link and tell that person as you type that I want to be baptized. Tomorrow we're having a big grand baptism. It's your time to shine.
Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. As I pray this short prayer, my friend will sing that song to encourage you tonight, to get you ready for tomorrow. Father in heaven, we thank you afresh for the total sufficiency of your grace that is never ending, it's never failing. Your grace is everlasting. Your God has, has never lost a battle. You will never lose a battle. You can never lose a battle. So tonight, we come with this assurance to know that every burden can be lifted at Calvary. And Jesus, you are very near. So Lord, I lift up my hands and I pray for a sweet anointing to fall in every worshiper in the house tonight. Those who are troubled, those who may be confused, those who are going through a challenging situation, life's vicissitudes and life's perplexities has taken us and taken us off course. But Lord, fix our focus more upon you. Pray for those on YouTube, on Facebook who are contemplating or going through their issues, but you're telling them, hashtag, just trust the process. Because soon and very soon, the breakthrough will come. As my sister sings that song, pray on. Pray on, my sister. Pray on, my brother. Time is ticking. You must surrender your life to Jesus. So, Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Take us not away from thy presence, O God. Take not thy Holy Spirit from us. But we beg you, divine God, you will restore in us the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit within us. Consecrate us now as we go to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May our souls look up with a steadfast hope and all our wills be lost and die. So let the words of our mouth, meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in thy blessed sight. O oh Lord, thank you for being our strength and O oh blessed Redeemer. Let everyone say, Amen. Be blessed by this song. See you tomorrow online as we keep hope alive.
your prayers may seem in vain they don't seem to make a difference they don't seem to make a change just rest assured god knows your needs and he hear each time you pray and your prayers are reaching heaven and the answers are the Pray on. Pray on. Oh, come on, bless the Lord. Come on. Somebody type in the chat. Pray on. Pray on. for allowing God to use you so mightily and thank you Shereen for letting God speak through you through music to remind us no matter what we're facing we ought to pray on and hold on and trust God and trust the process trust God and trust the process he's using to make us whole we bless the Lord tonight for his word I want to remind you again tomorrow we hope to see you. Uh, we'll be on the prayer line early in the morning for the 5, 30, 6 o'clock hour. We have Sabbath school to 10, and then Pastor Jovan White is going to preach for the noon hour, and then tomorrow afternoon. We have baptism immediately after church. Baptism is going to be right here. So if you are considering what does the Lord want me to do, what should I do, Holy Spirit has been speaking to your heart. We invite you to consider uh, taking that new stand, that fresh walk with God in the watery grave of baptism. And then we'll have Sabbath lunch, uh, Sabbath dinner right after baptism in Pine Forge Choir. Uh, we'll do a special premiere for us in-house, in-house. So we invite you to join us for that at 5 p.m. tomorrow evening. I have been blessed. I pray that you too have been blessed in the Lord. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Let's look to the Lord in prayer uh, and in benediction. Father God, thank you so much for ministering to us today. Thank you, Lord, that we are not caught unawares, but we have seen the signs all around us, and we know what these things mean. We bless your name that we are not uh, men and women who are ignorant, who will be led astray by cunningly devised fables, but having been students of the word, having been students of prophecy, we know that the hour is fast approaching. Now, keep us in the hollow palm of your hand, O oh God. Bless us in your will, and as we get ready to wind this thing down, may we keep our eyes looking towards the eastern skies and lifting up our heads knowing that our redemption draws nigh. Bless us, we pray tonight. Bring us back tomorrow morning for all that is planned tomorrow. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See you tomorrow.